Welcome back to the series of tutorials on uh, you know, preparing to conduct a multiple linear regression. In the last video we cleaned up the data and got our sum of the Machiavellian scores and the mean of our 10 item personality index scores. Measuring extroversion, higher scores represent higher levels of extroversion, agreeableness, same order, conscientiousness, emotional stability, and openness to new experiences, right? So before we run a multiple regression, there are certain assumptions that need to be tested and demonstrated if you are writing up a report. Some of these are perhaps less, less necessary to test and others you do need to demonstrate an actual, you know, um, some proof that it's, these assumptions have been met. And those are the ones I'm going to be focusing on today. So for this video, I'm looking particularly at one, the assumption that all predictors or independent variables, depending if you're doing experimental uh, or correlational approach, or cross-sectional rather, have a linear relationship with either the dependent variable or the outcome variable, right? The same, same variables, just different terminology depending on your design. Right, so let's start with a linear relationship. So essentially, the assumption of a linear relationship has to be met, otherwise you can't really use a multiple linear regression. You know, the key is in the name there. You'd have to do a non-linear regression, such as a quadratic or exponential type of uh, regression analysis. So for instance, here are some possible relationships. Not all of them, just some possibilities, right? In this graph, we have no clear relationship where there's no kind of definitive line or kind of pattern showing the relationship between the y and the x variable. Here we have a positive linear relationship simply as one variable increases so too does the other. A negative linear relationship as one variable increases the other decreases. Then we have a quadratic relationship where it sort of peaks off, goes down, then starts to come up again, and then an exponential relationship where it starts off quite low and then sort of shoots up towards the end, right? So you need to have at least some idea that there's a linear relationship between your IVs and your DV, or AKA your predictors and your outcome, right? So to do that, it's simply a matter of visually inspecting a scatter plot. Okay, so here I'm going to go to graphs, chart builder. I'm going to go down to scatter plot, drag the scatter plot up here, and then I have my Mac, so my level of Machiavellianism, as my sort of outcome variable, and I want to see whether extroversion, agreeableness, conscientiousness, emotional stability, and openness to new experiences sort of predict that. Yeah, so I'm going to start off with one graph and um, yeah, it looks like there's not much of a relationship there. It might be indicative of an upward trend, but really it's it's difficult to say in that sense. The kind of positive, I guess, is that it's not a non-linear relationship, it's either a <laughs> a lack of a relationship or a very weak linear relationship okay then let's have a look at the the other variables so we had extroversion agreeableness so that looks more like a negative relationship the more agreeable you are the less likely you are to be Machiavellianism or have high levels of Machiavellianism, which is you know, a sort of trait where you mis distrust people, mistrust their intentions, and so on. So that looks more clearly like a negative relationship, apart from this little outlier here. So uh, we'll leave it in for now, because it doesn't detract the trend too much. Then there we go, chart builder. 
Let's get rid of agreeableness, conscientiousness. I would perhaps expect a negative relationship here as well. And that is kind of what we get. Kind of. Does seem to show that sort of trend. And chart builder, emotional stability. So again, I would imagine a negative trend for this one. Oh, surprisingly looking towards positive, but again, not a very clear relationship, but it's not exponential or quadratic. So it's okay for now. Unlikely to be a significant association and then openness to new experiences. I don't imagine that that would be a predictor. In fact, uh, yeah, it doesn't really seem to be uh, high levels of openness to new experiences kind of across all spectrums of Machiavellian levels. Okay, so we can at least at this point have some indicator that the assumption of linearity, if it's not quite linear, it's definitely not quadratic or exponential. So we have a, a kind of an idea that it meets the assumptions of linearity, even if it is a very weak linear relationship. Okay, so what you might want to do in reporting these is either demonstrate that you have looked at scatter plots to assess the linear linearity of the relationship between the IVs and the DVs outcome predictor, or you can kind of post um, put these graphs in an appendix and then refer to them in your results section and say look at appendix one for the scatter plots of the between the relationship between the the outcome variable and the the various predictors that you have included in your your model okay so the next step is multi collinearity right so there are two ways to test this so multi collinearity when we mention that we're testing the assumption that the data does not show multi collinearity and this occurs when you have two or more independent slash predictor variables that are very highly correlated with each other. And the reason why this is important is that it leads to problems with understanding which independent variables contributes to the variance explained in the outcome or dependent variable, and as well as possibly causing some technical issues in calculating a multiple regression model. So just think of it this way. If you have two variables that are really strongly correlated, are they really measuring different things? And if you include these two variables that are essentially measuring a, the same construct or concept, how will you know which one of them is explaining or being the essential, the real predictor of explaining variance in your dependent variable? Yeah. So that is why you need to make sure that the level of multicollinearity is not problematic. That is not to say that your variables can't be correlated to each other. Of course, they need to have some level of correlation. Well, they probably should, but it just means that they can't have excessive level of multicollinearity to the extent they're really measuring a unitary construct. So there's two steps to doing this. One is by looking at a simple correlation. So if you go to analyze, correlate, and bivariate, and then we simply add the all of the variables that we're interested in, not ID, doesn't really matter. Well, doesn't matter at all and in this point and then we just add them in here so correlation coefficients leave it at person test of significance generally the default is two-tailed and then you can flag significant correlations if you want to options I mean yeah it's not really important at the moment and I like to click show only the lower triangle because otherwise it is just a repetition above and below the line of ones as you'll see now right so looking at the correlation between mac so so this isn't too important in terms of the collinearity between the the predictors and the outcome but i'm just gonna have a look at it and to kind of see to see what it shows right so machiavellianism is not correlated with extroversion 
it is negatively correlated with agreeableness as well as conscientiousness but not to emotional stability or openness so there's kind of null patterns we saw are reflected in this very weak um pearson correlation coefficient right so in terms of multicollinearity you want to look at the correlations that exist between your possible predictive variables it starts to become problematic if there's a correlation of above 0 0.8 negative or positive between your or your possible predictors right so we can kind of see looking down the line extroversion positively correlated with agreeableness but not to a large extent not to conscientiousness not to emotional stability and um, weekly with openness to new experience agreeableness slightly correlated with conscientiousness emotional stability or not really anything else not not to emotional stability and not to openness conscientiousness to emotional stability but not to openness emotional stability oh man no not related to openness to new experiences and so that we can kind of have a kind of idea now that multicollinearity is not going to be a problem because there is no very strong level of relationship between these variables okay to double check that we're actually going to run the regression model but not to interpret the regression model but rather just to look at the multicollinearity statistics so we're going to regression a linear model my dependent variable is maxim and i'm including all of my personality types in the model even though i know based on that correlation that it's unlikely that at least three of them will be significant predictors but i want to see the kind of test of multicollinearity so i'm going to go to statistics and click on collinearity diagnostics and that's all i'm doing for now and i'm going to click ok so really ignore everything else apart from this column here collinearity statistics and look at the vif so the vif is the variance inflation factor and that essentially is a score or a value that ranges from 1 to 10. if the vif is above 3 it starts to become problematic for multicollinearity if it's below 3 it should be okay if it's close to one you essentially do not have to worry about multicollinearity multi being a problem with your set of predictors and you can see all of these predictors are very close to one using our correlation analysis as well as these vif statistics which you can report either in an appendix or in your results section that the assumption that multicollinearity does not exist or is not at a problematic level has been met within your data okay so now you've tested linearity between the variables or the the predictors and the outcome as well as multicollinearity within the predictors as um as predicting the outcome variable in the next video we're going to be looking at homoscedasticity it's a horrible word to pronounce and the normality of the residuals the assumption that the residuals have an approximately normal distribution so if you want to watch that video don't go anywhere thanks for watching and see you all around at another time